our overarching point, that you are a high cost labor force, we have a system that depends on us working for coolie wages is a system that isn't worth having, is it? says might have been true in 1960 about the cost of coal. It isn't now. The UK actually produced now the cheapest coal in Europe, including Poland. So, you know, because of our technology and the way we do it here in this country, and that's why we should be reopening the pits. We should be reopening the pits and have a clean burn, I keep saying this, clean okay. burn generators. Thank Sorry. you, right. I so anyway. that point, though, you know. Could we move on to Steve Dunn's question, please? Steve Dunn. Is he here? Steve Dunn. Yes, um, I don't know. It's a really passionate debate out here. The question is kind of a bit of a tangent, really. But I want it to David Hank. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like a, like a two-parter, really. The first bit to George, and the second bit to um, the rest of the panel. Um, the first bit to George and uh, Chris Hutchins, uh, George, um, refers to you as a hypocrite and, quote, unquote, a not just a pimp, but a prostitute for dictators, okay? So the first part of that is, do you think you've got a point, or do you think he's completely off his trolley? I'm not sure what it's got to do with it. Okay. No, I don't know anything that's needed in British politics. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you know I can read, so you're very good. Give me a question. Okay, David. Well, 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 what I would say is I think you do need a far more radical, despite being described as a revisionist, approach, because what we have got is um, a new labour movement that's moved to the centre, uh, a Cameroon-type uh, sort of somewhere in the centre, but it's not very clear, and the Lib Dems all over the place, frankly. Uh, all of the parties, well, I'll just give you one, one example. The latest research reckons that the cost of bailing out the banks when we introduce major uh, cuts in public spending will probably mean 290,000 people are going to lose their jobs. In the, and I'm quoting an independent research study that I came across, and while to my surprise, or perhaps it shouldn't be to my surprise, it doesn't seem to be covered in the national press, uh, funded by the Gatsby Foundation, an independent group, have looked at this and said there's going to be on top of what we're talking about tonight, 25 years ago, we're going to have, like, we're talking about 8,000 jobs going in Newcastle, 2,000 uh, jobs going in Swansea. Because if the, and the real danger at the moment is there's just a total consensus, as far as I can see, among all the parties, oh, we've got to do this. And I'm sure we will say, well, probably we do have to. But I actually think that if you're going to do this, you're going to get a sway. We're talking about the minor strike 25 years ago. We're now going to get across the whole public sector, sort of people's living standards dropping in all our major cities when they've never really recovered, actually, in the last 25 years. And I'm talking about Liverpool. Thing. The only areas they could find, and this is quite interesting, it shows you how small our industrial base is, the places that won't do won't fall in this way, are Oxford and Cambridge. Cambridge mainly because it's a high-tech um, area that is a small, but uh, and Oxford, uh, frankly, because they said they raised student fees, and therefore the universities won't sack the staff because they get more money. <coughs> and frankly, if we're going to come to this area, I really think there's got to be a radical rethink, because I don't see why the country should have to go through another thing, equivalent to the minor state, to pay for what was absolute uh, ga casino gambling by the bankers with our money because there's been no, I mean, Lisa Barber is beginning to think on one point that one should distinguish between what a bank is and what a casino is over investment. And frankly, I think there is a point. And I actually might be old fashioned enough to say that the Atlee government is the best government that Britain ever had. I'm sure he would disagree. But the Atlee actually, I mean, he didn't deal with journalists at all, but the sense of it. And when he had a ticker tape in Darling Street, he thought he was the only use he saw it was seen with cricket screens. 
But actually, he went through, rather like saying, we're facing a crisis, foreign war, what do we need to do? We need a decent national health service. We need to actually bring into state ownership. And I mean, even a Labour government, when a private railway companies have failed, is stupid enough to put them up to sale to someone else when they've got them free. So it collapses. And I just think that they've got to be, uh, and frankly, I would quite like to see a return to the spirit that actually had in 45 in changing this country. And it would probably mean a big clash with Edwina. I don't yeah. know what uh, they Ken, think. Ken, 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 Ken. I think that there, there is a really important question here that you've, that you've raised. And, and that's the problem of representation. And we're getting a sense of it here tonight amongst what people are saying. Because we have uh, a Tory government which is pro-business. We have Labour, new Labour, which when it came to power, its slogan was Labour means business. Now, uh, we thought it meant that we're going to roll their sleeves up. Actually, it meant we mean we are supporters of big business. Is actually what Labour means business means. It is, it, it is, and that is, is one of the consequences of the miners' trust, because it pulled politics to the right, and the Labour Party, under the, the, the leadership of um, first John Smith and then Kinnock, uh, Lament of the Kinnock, uh, who cleansed the Labour Party of its left, uh, meant that it was no longer a broad coalition, it was a party of apparatchiks and careerists, and now that Labour Party is... is is, is a Tory party in its essential political nucleus. Because every politics that every policy that it is found is, is, to, is to set the ground rules for business to make profit. And that's Brown's way out of this crisis. I mean, they say ideology is dead. When the banks, they were forced to take the banks over, they didn't actually direct the investment for our jobs, for, to make things we need, to set up jobs where there would be apprenticeships and proper working conditions and trade union rights. No, they, they give it back to the bankers to gamble because that's the only game they understand. So we have a real problem with representation. We have the Liberals, of, of course, our party of business. So we have, we have a Labour Party which pretends to represent the interests of working people but actually, it pretends to, to represent their, their feelings or, or their culture or whatever. But actually, their politics represent the interests of the ruling class. And all the political parties do. So we have a real problem of representation. And that's really, that's, that's a dangerous position to be in. Because if your political system doesn't acknowledge and doesn't, doesn't reflect the divisions in society, you cannot have a democracy. <laughs> You can't have a meaningful political discussion because the two parties, the two elements in the society are not represented. So we have a real problem of representation. And I think it's been a problem on the left. And it's something that George and I have talked about, and other people here will have talked about, is that we, we've witnessed a historic failure on the left to bring together all the people who, and there are many in this room, and think of this room <coughs> replicated over and over again around this country. Many, we're not untypical. There are many people here who would be agreed on a broad left program. And that's what we need a movement for, that's what we need a party for, and that's our real opposition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Alan Windsor, and this is from Mike Natural. We have one we have one party in Westminster, it's called actually the Lib Lab Con. And they're a single issue party, and their single issue is let Europe rule and we'll sit here and take the money. And what's happening is they're taking our money 
and they are relocating our industry into Europe by subsidy with the money you are paying in taxes. <coughs> this country is still the sixth largest economy in the world. It was the fourth in 2004 when I was elected. And the way we're going will go down and down the tables because what you and I are doing, we're paying our taxes into a regime that appears to be moving all the industry abroad. It isn't just supply and demand, it is actually being done by subsidy, and I can give you actual examples if you care to ask me. So, what we're doing is undermining ourselves by being part of the EU and allowing them to do it. Full stop. Very interesting hearing uh, Ken talk about the broad left. I haven't heard anybody talk like that for a very, very long time. Well, you should yeah, I'm, 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 I'm say, it, it, it's a democracy. It's a democracy, Ken. Get together your broad left coalition and stand and see how many people will vote for you. And you all know your heart and heart. It won't be very many. It won't be very many. Uh, because one of, the, one of the problems I think this country faces is that many of the ologies and many of the isms I think are now outdated. Um, I'm, I'm not going to analyse the whole lot. The whole lot. I, what I would like to see, we, we all know what's going to have to happen in the next couple of years. Um, my fear is that we have a hung parliament and we don't have a government of any strength to start doing it. But it will need to be, there will need to be some changes. What I would dearly like to see is somebody asking the kind of question in this country that President Pompidou asked in France in 1970. He gathered together some of the best brains and he said, at the end of the century, in other words, over a 30-year period, what will France be exporting? And what they came up with, he invested government money in, and long-term research and support. They came up with, oh, people will be using more nuclear power. So France switched over to nuclear power. And they are the only country now that has got a, a proper nuclear power system. Uh, and in fact, they, they sell to us 20% of our energy comes uh, under, the, under the channel from the French nuclear power. The well, second one they said well. was people are going to be using trains and so they developed the TGV. The third is people are going to be using short haul but fuel efficient aircraft so they developed the Airbus and most of its work is done in France. And the fourth thing is oh, people are going to be using satellites, 1970 satellites <laughs> and what they're going to need is they're going to need a propulsion system, so they have the Ariane ro rocket, and every time one of those goes off, nearly all the satellites in space now are, are sent up by French uh, rocket. Wait, what this That's means that. is, wait a minute, what this means is that that was a government that was thinking ahead, and that was prepared to invest state money, taxpayers' money in it. I'm waiting for a government in this country well, you were to ask the same years. What did you do? <laughs>